It could be argued that sound or noise is the least appreciated element in our everyday life. We all take it for granted, listening to music or podcasts as a background soundtrack to our everyday. Being able to gauge if we have enough time to cross the road or how close that vehicle sounds. From our very beginnings as human beings, our ability to hear has been paramount to not only our lives, but to our survival. It is no surprise in that case that we have maintained an interest and a chronic curiosity with all things audible, even if we progressed into the modern era. Far flung from the days when a cracked branch or a trodden root signaled immediate danger, we now recognize the value that our hearing plays, even if it doesn't affect our survival in the modern day. Unless it's that chronic tinnitus I have, in which case, yes, it absolutely does affect my survival. Today, we're looking at a massive sound of unknown origin that was detected in 1997 known as Bloop or The Bloop. But before we go any further into it, this would be a great point to let you listen to the sound itself and see what you make of it. Adding another element of mystery and intrigue to this is just how it was detected and where it was recorded. The sound came from the ocean, and while we may have made advancements in terms of our knowledge of the deep by degrees as the years have rolled by, the fact remains that the sheer extent and expanse of our oceans on the face of the earth are nearly beyond comprehension. If you take it in in its totality, seas and oceans make up 139,668,500 square miles or 361,740,000 square kilometers of this ball that we call home, more than 70% of Earth's surface. Despite all of our advancements in technology and all of the strides we have made to explore the universe around us, there is a true yet unbelievable fact that remains. First mentioned in 1954, an article quoted by geophysicist Edward Bullard as saying the following, the deep oceans cover over two thirds of the surface of this world, and yet more is known about the shape of the surface of the moon than is known about the bottom of the ocean. While there have been many more journeys to the seabed and great achievements in discovering more about what is below and around us, the fact remains largely unchallenged in any meaningful way, even after nearly 70 years. This might explain a little as to why the bloop seemed to capture the interest of the public in such a way and why the cause of its origin is still a topic of hot debate, even up until now. The first question that most people ask is where was this sound initially located? And to answer that question, we need to look to an organization called the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA. In its own words, the NOAA describes its function as to provide daily weather forecasts, severe storm warnings, climate monitoring to fishery management, coastal restoration, and the supporting of marine commerce. Another element that is not only notable, but key to the detection of the bloop is the SOSUS. Originally, this was a submarine detection system that was developed by the US Navy in an attempt to track Soviet submarines during the peak of the Cold War. This came in the form of a string of detection centers that read data from hydrophones that were submerged in the Atlantic Ocean. While this military surveillance was initially disguised as oceanic research, once its purpose had been served, these impressive arrays of hydrophones reverted to actually provide the service that they had been allegedly doing. By the time the Cold War was over, there was very little realistic risk of Soviet submarines moving through the choppy waters that separate America from Europe and Africa. But there was a very real use for these high-tech detection systems. A key point of these systems was that they could detect sounds if they were loud enough from extreme distances away. Despite their physical location, these hydrophones could pick up and interpret sounds from multiple thousands of miles away if the conditions were ideal. And if they were, that could be up to 2,000 miles. Bloop, however, was picked up by the Equatorial Pacific Ocean Autonomous Hydrophone Array, a new set of hydrophones that were added to improve the coverage of the SOS US and what it offered. When they triangulated the location of the bloop, it was calculated to be in the Pacific Ocean, west of South America, and they described it as follows. For one, it was extremely loud, louder than anything else that had ever been recorded and rose in frequency for up to a minute. It was an ultra low frequency underwater sound that was detected by multiple different sensors over a range of multiple thousands of miles. And this wasn't even the first example of a sound being detected that was determined to be of an unknown origin. In fact, the NOAA has picked up multiple signals over its time of operation that they determined, at least for the time, to be of unknown origin. Is it aliens? It's always aliens. Examples of these include Whistle, Upsweep, Julia, and slow down, and here's each of those in order. Thank you. 
Again, for reasons that seem to stretch no further than explaining their names, these samples all are played at 16 times speed. The only assumption we can make from this is that these sounds build up and fade gradually, and when heard at a normal pace, amount to nothing more than a gradual rise or drop in tone and volume within the listener's headphones. So try to listen to these again, but this time in real time. They lose the characteristics that give them their names. While they do sound strange to the untrained ear, if you hadn't been told that you were listening to something remarkable, you probably wouldn't have noticed. However, have a listen to the bloop at its normal speed. This now sounds like something entirely different, something new, something potentially unknown and something that stretches the realms of our known physical world to its breaking point and beyond. While it has lost its bloop sound, it is a little easier to understand why people first thought of some undiscovered marine monster creating this sound. There were some possibilities considered for the source of the sound initially that seemed sensible at first blush. Could it have been a military exercise being carried out? Something classified and unannounced that they weren't told about? Controlled explosions, secret testing of underwater sonic weapons, literally aliens, all reasonable possibilities. Could it have been some sort of freak auditory amplification of a normal marine sound, like a ship engine or deck machinery or passing vessel? Or was it something a lot more natural? This was the theory that a lot of people seemed to latch onto initially. The first thing that was pointed out was that the sound signature and tone was reminiscent of the calls of whales used to communicate with one another. Not exactly, but in the same ballpark. The only problem that is encountered after this is the volume, duration, and reach of the sound. It was so far beyond the scope of any living being that we know of. For example, the blue whale commonly measures up to 100 feet long with a weight of more than about 150,000 pounds. A specimen hunted in Antarctica in the 1940s was measured at 428,878 pounds. In the wild, they make calls to communicate with one another. A loud whistling call that is extremely loud, actually, like louder than a jet engine, in excess of 180 decibels. It would blow your eardrums out if you were close enough. These calls are capable of being heard up to 1,000 miles away, or roughly about 1,600 kilometers. They also exist in a perfect pocket to make these calls travel insane distances. First and foremost, they have the advantage of being in the water, and it is well known that sound travels far better in water than it does in air. However, because they tend to spend the majority of their time at significant depths, when they put these calls out, they gain a second benefit. The sound waves travel in what is called an acoustic guide, where at an ideal depth, they bounce back and forth off the seabed and onto the surface, increasing their range by degrees. But the bloop is so much louder and stronger than any blue whale could ever produce. So given that, people started to think a little bigger. In order for it to be a call of a live organic being and the initial thoughts were that it would need to be some like truly enormous animal, like a size greater than any known animal and greater than that by substantial degrees. Most of the well-known underwater giants were touted as potential suspects by those that believed it to be biological in origin. The giant or colossal squid was both suggested in some circles, but neither are known to communicate with these sort of calls. If there were creatures out there causing these detected sounds, it would have to be at least two times bigger than a blue whale. It would be larger than the fabled megalodon that is generally assumed to have gone extinct 3.6 million years ago. Basically, it would need to be the single largest marine creature the world had ever seen. And due to the fact that this was an isolated single occurrence, it would also need to be the only time that their communication had ever been picked up. Those that steered away from science and to the undiscovered or unknown mythical beasts beneath the waves stay in the realms of at least nature, but people who tend to kind of like be guided by science towards it and maybe it's not so fantastical move towards geology. There was a suggestion that possibly there was an underwater volcanic activity that caused the bloop, and once again, there aren't many issues with this initially. A single sunburst of tremendous sound, and then nothing of that size or scale was detected ever again. That would fit the bill perfectly. 
However, there were no significant underwater volcanic activities detected on that date or even remotely near the area. And given the many detectors that picked up the bloop, the other monitoring systems would have been unlikely to miss a one minute explosion of that extent. What is generally now accepted as a source of the bloop is far more pedestrian, but makes sense in a lot of ways. In layman's terms, it has been attributed to an ice quake. The equivalent of an earthquake in an area that is primarily or only has ice as its landmass. Technically referred to as a cryosism, these events can be huge in terms of amount of landmass shifted and the noise that they can create are enormous. Enormous enough that they can be detected as far away as the hydrophones 3,000 miles or 5,000 kilometers away. There are also additional happenings within the surprisingly complicated world of ice formation sound creation that muddy the waters a little bit. They all present themselves as reasonable candidates for the bloop, but are just debating the exact mechanisms that caused this massive sound. When chunks of ice separate off from either a glacier or an iceberg, it is known as ice calving. And this can create its own additional and very loud sounds. When transmitted through water, a good conductor for these sort of sound waves, they can equally travel for vast distances. These massive masses of ice can also be heard rubbing and ridging against each other in a perfectly natural yet bizarrely loud occurrence. Here is a more thorough explanation of the rubbing and ridging within an ice flow from an expert explaining how it happens and why it can create such amounts of noise. A wave equation resulting from shear deformation will be defined as an ice flow with the rubbing effect coupled to the flow through its boundary with an adjacent ice. While ridging deformations revealed by this event indicate that the failure process is associated with a crushing process that seals air or vacuous gaps between ice flows. The acoustic signals emitted by this failure process are similar to those emitted from collapsing air bubbles within fluid. While the vast majority of that is confusing to most people, the takeaway is that massive portions of ice will grind against one another and the result is a huge amount of noise. As is always the case in situations like this, when the official explanation was released, this was met with mixed reactions. For a lot of people, it was aliens, and it was also the first time hearing about the bloop at all. It was their first time listening to it and understanding where it happened and how it was detected. For the vast majority of these people, there was a case of learning about a little oddity in the middle of the great unknown ocean, and then they moved right on ahead with their day. For those who were already aware, the outcome was mixed again. Many had followed the unknown underwater anomaly and debated long and hard about the origin. For most of them, the explanation made sense. Here were certified and educated experts giving a plausible reason that seemed to soundly sum up the event. For them, it was well-reasoned, fair, and understandable of an explanation for what could have caused the bloop in the first place. Falling ice, cryosism, and ice calving may not have really been familiar terms to them, but they seemed plausible in the very limited scope of what they were looking at. And just like that, they probably accepted the explanation and walked away. However, there are still others that won't go so quietly. There are people that have listened to the bloop and decided that it was a call of some creature, some enormous monstrosity, and yet unknown to science or man. A sound recorded for posterity in all time that may have been the first encounter that our race ever had with some relic of a bygone era. Some eldritch horror that still roamed the depths of the oceans, far away from prying eyes and probing scientists. And no amount of explanation will convince them otherwise. Just because there's a more realistic explanation offered now, they feel no obligation to accept it. There have been illustrations drafted of how the bloop, the animal that caused the infamous noise, must have looked. There are comparative diagrams where it is shown in size compared to some of our current and historical underwater behemoths. Dwarfing blue whales and even making a megalodon look like nothing small. Outshining and outlasting the Mosasaurus, the Leviathan, and the Ichthyosaur. The bloop still roams the pitch black of the extreme deep. Nothing will dissuade them from this course, no amount of reason or logic. No questions as to why this noise has only been heard on one single isolated occasion. No repetition. No sheer unlikeliness of a creature of this scale surviving for the length of time that it has without detection and has only been recorded once. And in a world where animals such as the great squid that were considered legends and exaggerations up until they were filmed for the first time in 2012, I mean, why not? Why not choose to believe that there is something far more than what we've understood lurking beneath the waves somewhere far in the briny deep? I mean, it's not like we haven't found creatures that we totally assumed were nothing to have ever existed ever before very recently. 
Well, that's going to do it for me. I appreciate you guys listening. Let me know what you think about what the bloop actually is. Probably ice, but actually, I really don't know if it would be better if it was something else because I don't want something that big going around in the ocean. I sometimes take cruises. But uh, I would like to thank my patrons real quick. First, at the literal Wendigo tier, we have Grayson West. Thank you, sir. I do appreciate it. Next up, on the secondhand accounts, we have Kanan Johnson and Troy. And the rest of my patrons, I thank you guys as well. Your hope goes a long way towards keeping this channel running. It's really cool that you guys decide to actually be patrons of kind of like this little secondary channel. Uh, I'm back from PAX, so I'll be posting a lot more. I do appreciate you guys listening, and I'll see you all in the next one.